Hello, I'm Igor and welcome to my tech farm. I have a 3D printer for this review video and it is KP3S Pro S1. At least I think it is because this is what we discussed in the email, but in a box it says KP3S Pro, not the S1. And on picture I can see also it is the Pro version because it uses the, those uh, rubber wheels and not the linear rails. We will see if I take it out from the box, maybe it is the S1 version inside. I already tested their KP3S printer, which is a small, great printer for the beginners. I can highly recommend it, and it is very cheap. I cannot tell that for the KP5S because it is a little bit more complicated for the settings, and I don't recommend it to the beginner users. And let's see the specifications for the S1. It uses the linear rays on all three axes. It has direct drive extruder with a 3 to 1 ratio. This means it is great for GPU filaments and I will test it with some flexible filaments printing. The build volume is 200 by 200 by 200 millimeters in all three axes and it is quite according to the website. It has built-in power supply unit because uh, with the previous one, the KP3S, the power supply unit was separated and this is better not only for the safety reason but also it used the smaller footprint on the desk. And according to the website, 15 minutes installation uh, almost like bamboo lab, but probably this is only for the hardware because here we have to do some manual settings to the leveling and similar. And also I got this uh, one kilogram PLA filament. It is in pinky color, so I can see some Barbie furniture printing on it. And um, okay, let's see what's in the box. The packaging is good. Everything is nicely protected during the shipping. This was content of the box. User manual uh, Z-axis lead screw, which is protected in this pipe. And then we have the base of the printer and the pre-assembled Z and X-axis with the direct drive extruder. This is the power cable, some uh, spare parts and bolts for the installing. And then, uh, not my favorite, the spool holder and the sample filament. So I'm not even sure how can I use this sample filament with this spool holder. Z-axis installation is the same. So first I'm preparing these T-nuts. And then two longer bolts from the back side. There are also two smaller M5 screws from the bottom, which I noticed later. The lead screw installation and installing into this uh, coupler. Unfortunately, I can see that it arrived with the carborundum glass uh, because it can be ordered with the PEI sheet too, and I highly recommend you to buy that version. Now let's remove the foils. Also from the screen too. And really the hardware installation is finished, so we don't have to set the V-slot wheels because it rides with the linear rails. Quick check of the tension on the timing belts. It is good, but it is very easy to set with this knob here for the Y-axis and this one for the X-axis. And just a quick look to the switch to check if the voltage is set correctly for my country. It says 230 volts. That's okay for Europe. In US you have to set it to 115. I can plug the power cable. The power cable length is one meter. Well, in my case it could be a little bit longer. So this is the back side of the printer. There is the limit switch for the Y-axis. Uh, with this I can set the position of the Z-axis. I will see that later when I start with the leveling. And this is the filament runout sensor, so this means the spool holder must be on this side. And uh, well, it requires some DIY solutions if I want to place the spool holder somewhere on the top of the printer. Because the natural filament pad for the direct drive extruder is from the top. Uh, that's probably why we have this uh, bobbin tube. I think this is called reverse bobbin style when the direct drive extruder pulls the filament because it has to go inside here where the filament sensor is. Well, this will be challenging using the sample filaments with this pull holder. But that's why I got this uh, sample filaments. Oh, it is rainbow. Very nice. Well, this was a pleasant surprise to me because I never tried this. I think they are called rainbow filament where they're changing the color after every, I don't know, several meters. Well, let's turn it on and do the leveling process. Leveling. 
Mm -hmm. This is so-called assisted bed leveling, so this means when I press the button, it will move the nozzle automatically above that point, and I can rotate this wheel to set that minimal friction, the correct distance between the nozzle and the bed surface. And I have to repeat in all four corners, and then in the center, last check, and then I'm finished. Probably it is doing the homing now. It looks like I have a small problem, so on this side it is exactly on the bed, on the other side it is far. It is at least 3 or 4 millimeters, and I cannot compensate that anymore with these springs, they are completely loose. Now I believe that uh, this vertical air extrusion is not completely squared to the base. And reason for this, now we have uh, two two bolts from the side only. The older version had two bolts from the bottom, which is less comfortable for use, but it pulls it and if it is cut correctly, it will give us perfect square. Now I have to check if I assemble this uh, perfectly squared. Uh, I'll try to modify a little bit and then I hope it will be okay. Well, I didn't notice on time, but there are two additional smaller bolts from the bottom too. I will show them soon. It should be okay now, approximately 2 mm gap on this side, 2 mm gap on this side. I can tie the bolts now and it's ready now for the leveling. Hello, it's Igor from the future who is always smarter. And uh, it's partly my mistake, partly two weak uh, user manual, two small pictures, but uh, actually there are two additional smaller bolts which has to be screwed from the bottom and tie them first and only then the rest of the screws. And now I can finish the leveling process. And it's perfect. A smaller bed size is always easier for the manual bed leveling. And now let's put some filament in it and do some printing. Let's preheat the nozzle. I can see the temperature is ready, now I can insert the filament. And this side is not locked, so I can take it out easily and finish the inserting from the other side. And I can see it on the other side. And now let's print something from the SD card, which is prepared by the manufacturer. Hmm. File names are on Chinese, <laughs> so I have to check on the computer what is this. This file I renamed to robot. This looks like some kind of dice tower. This is the XYZ calibration cube. And this is the famous Banshee. Robot. This is bed position for the clip, it should be here. The printing start is good, very nice first layer I had. That was a bridging. After 20 minutes the printing is at 80% and I cannot see too much from these rainbow colors on one small object. Let's see what settings we have during the printing. We can pause or stop the printing. We can change the temperature of the bed or nozzle, change the filament. And the more we can set here the fan and the printing speed. And the printing is finished in uh, 26 minutes. And immediately I want to check the bed adhesion. Ah, which is great. Okay, I will wait until the surface cools down and then I will try to remove it. It should be much easier. The bed cooled down, let's see how easy it is to remove. Okay, acceptable. The printing looks nice, even the first layer is okay. Uh, seams lines are visible on the back side, but that's typical on the sealed filaments. Only I worry about this horizontal line approximately on 10 mm uh, Z coordinate and it completely goes around and I don't think this is part of the design. We will see if it will be appeared on the next printing which will be a Benchy. The first layer is down finally, it doesn't look perfect but it's finished and that's what I don't like with this uh, glass. Uh, you must have perfect distance between the nozzle and the uh, top surface. That's why I like better the PI sheet. So definitely I highly recommend you to buy that version because it is less sensitive to human errors. The printing is at 20% and the progress is good so far. Printing is finished few seconds ago. Mm, it's, it's good. The bench is completely green, so uh, not too much use of this uh, rainbow filament if you don't print some really big object. Okay, now let's take a closer look. And this bench looks good, there is no problems on the side surfaces. 
The first layer which I noticed it is not perfect, but it is quite acceptable. The seam lines are quite hidden. The back text is not readable on the Benchy, and uh, interesting surface on this edge of the door. I never saw this before, but otherwise quite good from this printer. This is Ultimaker Cura, add printer, non-network printer, and searching for the King Rune folder here. And I'll just rename this one and uh, change the build volume because this has a 200 millimeter cubic and importing a calibration cube, but uh, this one can be used as uh, D6 dies. The progress is good more than 50% and you can see the Y and X axis here. Finished in 21 minutes and the bed cooled down already. Not really the perfect calibration cube. This is the X direction, this is the Y direction. This is the top layer, again not perfect. <laughs> Maybe the best is the first layer now. But again I can see that horizontal line. And I checked, it is not in exactly the same Z position like with this uh, small robot. So uh, I'm a little bit confused. Maybe uh, it appears where it has a lot of uh, retraction and Z-hops. Maybe adding a backlash nut could be a solution. I'm not really sure. As always, I like to test the printing in spiral or ways mode too. At least here we don't have the Z-hop and the traction. And this is a low poly base from Printables. And I can also test that first layer to check how leveled is the bed. And everything started perfectly. And I thought that this printing will be without any problems because moving of the nozzle is smooth without any breaks. Later when I checked my printing, I noticed some horizontal lines and that the extrusion is not continuous. And then I spot the problem. The Teflon tube and the hot end virus are tangled. There is some friction between them and this resulted in this incontinuous extrusion. Unfortunately, I couldn't solve this problem without stopping the printing, so I just let it go. But at some point the layer adhesion was so big at one layer that there the layers didn't stick to each other and this was the final result of this first printing. Well I couldn't stop here, I wanted to be sure that this is the real problem. So I took out the end of the Teflon tube and moved to the other side. And then I restarted this uh, three and a half hours printing of this uh, low poly base. Looks promising so far. And this time it was completely finished without any problems. And now let's take a closer look. I still have to solve one very important mystery and that's that horizontal line around these objects. And then I decided to investigate a little bit more. So I tied the belts and reprinted the calibration cube and again I can see that horizontal line here. So this means the error repeats. Then I took off the top uh, flange bell ring on the lead scope because basically it just uh, prevents it from the bending but sometimes it may even cause some problems. But again the same issue I have with the, this third cube. And then somebody on Facebook mentioned me that uh, maybe I could try to reverse rotate the lead screw because maybe there is some dirt or something like that on the one, that one side. And that's what I did and then finally mystery solved and I got a very nice and clean object without that horizontal line. And just to be sure I reprinted this uh, small toy or robot and again without that horizontal line anymore. So mystery finally solved. And it is time to print something from flexible filaments. This is TPU95 by Polymaker. Inserting is a little bit tricky in this river burden, but uh, it's okay. And this is the first layer, which is perfect. Only 40 degrees Celsius on the bed surface. And uh, printing is nice, only I can see stringing between two objects. But this will be easy to remove it. And since it is flexible, it is very similar like if we have a flexible bed. So removing of the object is not a problem. And I can test this printing. These are job covers from my Knipex players, which I'm using sometimes to press in magnets into some softer materials. So I don't want to damage them. And other conclusions. This is KP3S from my previous video, the older version. And I still think that uh, these printers has their place on the market because of their price. And also I can see very often that they are part of the print farms uh, for printing those objects which can fit on this smaller surface. 
I can see improvements compared to the previous version. For example, linear rays on all three axes, filament runout sensor, stronger yellow springs on to hold the position of the bed much longer, bed tensioners, and also the power supply unit is now below the printer because here it was separated and with this uh, it requires more space on the desk. Somehow I still had more positive experience with the older version. If this is a printer for beginners, uh, I wouldn't sell it with this carbon glass. It is very sensitive to human errors. The distance between the nozzle and the surface must be very precise, a little bit too close or too far, and we don't have uh, correct bed adhesion. So definitely, if you buy this, uh, buy it with uh, that flexible PEI sheet. Something like this, but this is soft magnetic. Not my favorite. It is good if you print only, I don't know, PLA, PETG, TPU. But if you want to print ABS, which uh, likes to warp, even if you have good bed adhesion, uh, it may lift the corners of the bed. So I like better those PI sheets which are on the steel plate. Uh, this wool holder is not my favorite again. Uh, much better solution would be somewhere on the top, but here we have to solve that we have to move somehow this filament runout sensor to be between the spool holder and the nozzle. When you are installing the lead screw, pay attention that it is clean and then put some grease on it. And also pay attention to the position of the hot end cables and this Teflon tube. Anyway, I can highly recommend these printers if you want to enter into see the printing world and this build surface is enough for you. Uh, if you have some additional experience, you know a few lines in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy printing!